Good morning, church. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for another opportunity to study your word. Father, we ask that you will inspire us, you will teach us your word this morning in Jesus' name. All that you have in mind for us, help us not only to listen, but to be the doer of your word in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Last week in our study scripture, we studied about the damnation of false prophets and teachers. And in the study, we learned about the activities which is aimed at uh, deceiving and seducing people from the faith. And as believers, we learned we are not to follow their pernicious ways, which eventually leads to destruction and perdition. But today, we are considering study 919 from our search description booklet, lesson 919, Preparation for the Day of the Lord. Can you say that after me? Our memory verse is taken from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. I want a volunteer to please uh, indicate to read for us. Any volunteer? Okay, my sister there. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, and the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall be the elements shall be uh, met with fervent heat, and the earth also the world that are there eh, shall be burned up. Second uh, Peter chapter three verse ten. Thank you very much, my sister. Can somebody from the choir please uh, read our text for us? A fast reader from the choir. Second Peter chapter 3, from verse 1 to verse 18. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days coffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water, and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, what, not willing that any should perish, but at, that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. See then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of, the, of God, wherein heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, 
and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spots and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, are treating unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some, some things hard to be understood, which they that, they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, see ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Verse 18, but grow in grace and in, no, in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much. The study this morning is very important to every uh, heaven-bound saints. The day of the Lord is different from the lost day. The lost day is a day of worship, but the day of the Lord comes after the rapture of the saints. Both the Old and New Testament revealed its certainty. It will be a time of gloominess, a time of woes, and unparalleled troubles. It will be a time of devastation and destruction on the world. Today's teaching is to clearly admonish believers of the need to be prepared more than ever before and to warn sinners and backsliders of the need to genuinely repent and return to the Lord. Question number one, what do you understand by the phrase, the day of the Lord? Who can help me? Yes, my brother here. The day of the Lord is the day of trouble and indignation. It's also known as the, uh, the day of Jacob's trouble. It comes after the saints are uh, raptured. Thank you very much. We're going to quickly look at three sub in our teaching. Number one, warning against coffers, false prophets, and teachers. Point number two, winning the loss before the day of the Lord. And point number three, watchfulness and steadfastness of saints in the last days. Let's look at the first point. Warning against scoffers, false prophets, and teachers. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, 2 Peter chapter 3 from verse 1, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I set up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of all the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Also in Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, from verse 15. Matthew chapter 7, from verse 15. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bear, bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Our Lord Jesus Christ refers to them as wolves. Wolves are dangerous animals. And he warned believers to beware of their antics. 
Another question. Describe the danger posed by false preachers and teachers today. Anybody here? Is there anybody that can? Yes, my brother. Thank you. One of the danger is that they divert and distract the attention of the, their followers. Thank you very much. Their intention is to distract and divert men from the truth of the word of God. Number two, they scorn and scoff the sound doctrine. You know, they query, where, they say, where is the promise of his coming? Not only that, number three, they peddle on, on scriptural prophecies to mislead the gullible. And you find them mostly on internet, on social media, and so on. Number four, they influence all categories of people with their false teachings. Even the educated and the enlightened ones are not spared. Number five, they indoctrinate their followers with their own ideology, contrary to the scriptures. Number six, they aim at destroying their faith in God and water down the commitment of their followers and their faithfulness unto God. Number seven, ultimately, their final aim is to damn their souls in hell. My prayer is that you and I will not be a victim of their antics in Jesus' name. Question number three. What should heaven bound saints do to avoid the corrupting influence of false prophets and teachers? Yes, my brother. The brother there, yes. From them. We need to run away from them. Not to follow them at all. Thank you very much. Believers must avoid listening to their teachings, refrain from having fellowship with them, refuse to accept their printed or electronic materials, and we should stand by the truth. We should know the truth. We should love the truth. We should meditate on the truth. We should also publicize it. And also, as believers, we should be watchful and prayerful. This will take us to the second point, winning the lost before the day of the Lord winning the lost before the day of the Lord. As the day of the Lord draws nearer, God has placed responsibility on every believer to reach out to the lost before it will be too late. This is the time to labor more than ever before in rescuing the perishing souls. In 2 Peter chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3 from verse 9, 2 Peter chapter 3, I read from verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards world, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. If you are here this morning and you are here to find peace with God, you still fall and rise in sin, or you are almost deadening your conscience in sin, please, the Lord is pleading with you this morning to come back to the Savior as God's offer of salvation has an expiring date. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, the Bible says, For it seeth, I have had thee in a time accepted, and in a day of salvation, have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. In Isaiah chapter 55, Isaiah chapter 55, from verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man is thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, 
for it will abundantly pardon. Another question. Given the fact that the day of the Lord is fast approaching, what should sinners and saints do urgently? Anybody? Yes. The sinners are to repent, while the believers are to hold on to the word of God to the end. Thank you very much. Sinners are to urgently repent of their sins and flee for refuge and salvation in Christ before it is too late. Believers, on the other hand, are to maintain a life of holiness. We are to be expectant of the coming of the Lord and we are to be watchful and prayerful. The horrors of all the wars ever fought, all the natural disasters we've ever read about, all the epidemics, the tsunamis, the hurricane is nothing to be compared with terribleness of those days. And in fact, you can even see from the experience of what is currently going on in the world now about the Hurricane Dorian. Even though it's happening in the developed world, but it is very clear that they could not help it, they could not do anything about it. And that is a signal to everyone that when the judgment of God is about to come, the only thing we can do is to prepare to escape. And my prayer is that you escape in Jesus' name. This will lead us to the last point, watchfulness and steadfastness of saints in the last days. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. I read from verse 14. Second Peter chapter 3 from verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, as written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Verse 18, but grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. Brethren, the urgent commandment of the scripture and the appeal of apostle peter to every believer is for us to be vigilant and for us to abstain from things that can disqualify us at the rapture after also our lord jesus christ commanded all believers to watch and to pray in matthew chapter 26 verse 41 our lord jesus christ told us watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Brethren, the arm of the flesh will fail you. And that is why we need to absolutely depend on his grace. Question number five. What preparation is the believer to make in view of the rapture and the day of the Lord? Any hand? To watch, pray, Continuing to grow in grace and also to be steadfast in the service of the Lord. Thank you very much. We need to grow in grace. We are to watch over the following areas of our lives. We are to watch over our words, what we speak. We are to watch over our affections. We are to watch over our conduct. We are to watch over our character. And more importantly, we are to watch over our hearts. That's why Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 tells us. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, it says, Keep thy hand with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Remember the story of the young prophet sent by God to Bethel in 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 11 to 24. He rested when he was not supposed to rest, and eventually he was met and deceived by the old prophet. His ministry was cut short and unfortunately was destroyed 
by the lion. Brethren, as we bring this teaching to a close, I remembered a particular man of God was traveling and he was on, in a transit. And eventually, when he got to that particular place, he kept his password, his passport in, in the bag. And when it was time for, for the next flight to board the plane to his final destination, he looked for the passport, he couldn't find it. The boarding announcement was made, first announcement, the final announcement, he couldn't find it. And unfortunately, the, he couldn't make the flight. He missed the flight. There are some of us who are here. We have come a long way. We have been following the Lord 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, or even more. And we are like on the journey to the final destination. How is your faith in the Lord? Are you still keeping that faith? Are you still getting yourself prepared? Are there some carelessness coming into your life? That is the reason why we need to pray and seek the face of God this morning. Rise up and let's go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to rise upon your feet and call upon the name of the Lord. That young prophet was very close to escape, but unfortunately, he missed it. He rested where he was not supposed to rest. Are you already relaxed? Are you taking things easy now? How is your commitment and your dedication to the Lord? Are you still very fervent as it used to be? Or you are now very relaxed with the things of God? Things that will message you will hear that will make you cry. Does it see touch your heart today? Why don't you commit yourself unto the Lord? Your passports to heaven, your visa, are they still current? Are you sure you are ready for the kingdom of the Lord? Commit yourself unto the Lord. Father, we thank you for what you have taught us this morning. We are asking you, O oh Lord, this morning you reveal your mind unto us and wake us up. Help us to be ready and prepared for your coming. Lord, we want to partake in the rapture. Prepare us for that day, O oh Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. Continue with us in the service. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. We've just had a very interesting and challenging study focusing on our preparation for the coming of the Lord. If you have any question arising from the study, I want you to please come to the front of the uh, hall. You have any question based on this study? Please come forward so that you have opportunity to ask a question. Okay, let's have the the first brother there. Yes, the other brother. Good morning, sir. Yes, please, let's just keep our questions straightforward. Make it straightforward. Good morning, sir. Good morning. This morning, we have uh, learned about uh, the day of the Lord. And uh, we are told that what is going to characterize the last days is going to be we have first doctrines and also first teachers now i want to ask this question is it really right for us to let the member knows who the first teachers are and uh, also uh, their churches by mentioning names 
and also um, these first teachers we come to realize that uh, they are wolves but they pretend to be real servants of God and when you talk about okay sorry bro yeah I think your question is um, I can infer from what you have said okay. so you have already asked your question let's have the next person yeah, good morning sir we thank God that for the teaching of this morning, sir. Yes, thank you. Please just go straight to the question. The question I want to ask, we thank God for the man of God that God has given to us. Because he will always tell us that, Lord, this very Bible is so secret. Please just go straight to the question. What's your question? Okay, the question I want to ask, after the Lord, now remember, we are being told this morning that there is going to be a great tribulation. My question this morning is that all these false teachers, false prophets, because if you look at uh, uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew 24 and in verse 1 and verse 21 precisely, the Almighty God said, since the beginning of the world, there can be nothing that can be compared with tribulation. Now, these false prophets and false teachers, are we sure they will be able to withstand the tribulation? Okay. It's all right. Thank you very much. Um, sorry, let's just address, because we have very limited time. The questions center on the false prophets. Let's go back to Second Peter chapter three, our text. Second Peter chapter three, look at verse one. It says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. It says that he was writing this to stir the mind of the people, to appeal to their conscience, to talk their consciousness. What we find in so many places today is that they stir emotion. The emotion of churchgoers and people are jumping and excited and that's all but the essence of scriptures is for us to be affected in our mind to think to reason and to take appropriate steps so then what was he staring them what was he reminding them he said that he was he, he wanted to steer their mind so that it will bring them to consciousness so that they will remember some things. Look at in verse 2. It says that he may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Now, it tells us about what has been written. The Old Testament, then the collection of the gospel epistles, and he is saying that he just wanted to remind them of all this. Understand that this was Peter's, Apostle Peter's last epistle. It was like the last words he was going to say to the church before he was murdered. And that carries so much weight because it was the thing that was pitching on his heart at that time. It, it was a reflection of what he wanted the church to be focused on. And what was the church to focus on? They were to focus on the coming of the Lord and the issues that were going to happen in the future. And now he told in verse 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own Lost. So he was actually intent in addressing the kind of uh, diversion that some people introduced or were introducing even as, as early as that time. And he, that also applies to us today, that there were going to be deceivers, there were going to be people who were going to spring up. If you look at Christ's words to his disciples also in Matthew chapter 24, 
Christ also, when he was asked that very important question about the end of the age, look at what he said in Matthew chapter 24, in verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of the, thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and I and, um, shall deceive many. Look at verse um, 10, verse um, 11. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. So the issue of deception, Christ had foretold that. And Peter was reminding them that this was going to happen. And it was going to happen even more as the end of the age will approach. So the times in which we live now, see that it is happening a lot. There are deceptions. People are peddling all kinds of um, teachings. First of all, look at our text again, where he now mentioned scoffers. That is a branch of these deceivers. Look at verse 4. It says in verse 3, knowing these falls that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. This is just a one of such that will happen in the last days. When the Bible talks about last days, look at what it says again in, um, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, the last, last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and, com and commanding to abstain from meats, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth, and so on. Now, you see, the emphasis is the last days, the last days, perverted teachings, distracting teachings, doctrines of the devils, these things will happen. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, in verse 1, it says, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Now look at verse 5. It says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And then what did he say? What does he say here? From such do what? Turn away. So, this is very clear that there will be deceivers. But the one that we are focusing on today, or that the, our pass, uh, the passage we are considering today focuses on is um, on the scoffers. Let me, you know, just say, our brother was asking about whether we should expose these people, will it be right to mention their names or mention, of course, if you begin to mention names, then we have to publish a very long list. What we do, you say with the Bible, you teach what the Bible says, and the Bible tells, you know, in the place we have just learned, uh, what our teacher told us here, he says that by their fruits you shall know them. 
So when you stay with the scriptures and tell what the scripture says, of course, if you have cause to say that so and so people are teaching error, you say that so that our members will be able to understand, to, to, to know their left from their right, so that they are not carried about to and fro by every wind of doctrine. It's important that we understand. Peter said here that he determined, he designed to uh, stir the hearts, the minds of the people and remind them so that constantly they will be in consciousness of these truths including the truth of deceivers that will come in the last day. So you can, if you are a teacher or if you are a pastor, a leader of people, there is nothing absolutely wrong in telling the members of the church that see this doctrine, see these people that are peddling it, see this, desist from that. But it goes beyond that. You see that mockers here, that you know, the, the scorners and the mockers that they're talking about here even goes beyond church circles, especially as it has to do with the coming of the law, which is the hope of the believers. Christ has told that he will come again, and people base their faith on that and have been waiting even as early as the early church. You know, at that time, the time we are reading now. They were hoping that Christ will come. And having waited for some years and years, some of them might also have been thinking, uh, Christ said they will come and will be told that, where is he? Now, some people will want to now ply on that vulnerability to bring them down, bring their faith down. And Paul, Peter now answered to all those objections. They raised certain objections. And like I said, it is not only within the church system. There are secular scholars, intellectual people, who also antagonize the scriptures generally. And when it comes to the coming of Christ, we see that people are very, very violent about the opposition. And they are telling you that there is nothing like that. Even musicians are singing and saying, will Christ ever come again or something like that? These are part of the scorners, mockers. Now, are they people who don't, who don't have intellectual capacity to comprehend scriptures, comprehend history? No. Bible tells us that they were willfully, look at verse 5. For this they willingly are ignorant of. They, were, they are willful, ignorant people. They decide to shut their minds from the truth. And why are they doing that? In the place I read earlier in verse 3, it says, Knowing this first that there shall, be, there shall come in the last days scorners walking after their own lusts. That means that these people have something to cover. They are uh, people who were filled with lusts. And they don't want any conscience that will prick them. They don't want responsibility. They don't want to square up with the outcome of their sinful life. Therefore, they wish that there is nothing like judgment. There is nothing like the day of the Lord. There is nothing like future responsibility. And they teach it. They assert it. And they try to deceive other people and overthrow their faith. But I pray that your faith will not be overthrown. Even today, pseudo-scientists are pushing that button and trying to discredit the Bible, discredit you know, the, our hope in Christ, discredit anything about the coming of Christ. But you and I know that the signs of Christ's coming, the signs of the end of the age are, 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 are upon us. The signposts are posted everywhere, and we're seeing the things happening in, um, you know, the, it's as, in, in an accelerated uh, manner. In these days, the social order is changing, adjusting to that. And then the te te technology is, you know, is backing it, and they're producing materials that will be for the Antichrist today, that, 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 that will be instruments for the Antichrist. And the political order, spiritual order, every system is adjusting for the coming of Christ. But again, understand that Bible tells us about the day of the Lord 
the day of God. These are the days of men. And people is their time. They are just, you know, doing what they want to do. Governments and people and anybody. But like they say that one day is for, uh, that every day is for the thief. And one day is for the owner of uh, the house. The day of God is coming. And we have learned today that it's a day of devastation. It's a day of serious problems and challenges. The Bible tells us in this place where we have read that this earth, this system is reserved for fire. And uh, when that day comes, where will you be? What would have happened to you? We know that the rapture will happen because the Bible has made us understand that God is going to gather up his people before all these devastations, the troubles that we visited on the earth will come. Look at in Revelation, Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. In Revelation chapter 6, in verse 12, it says, And I beheld, and I, I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became, beca became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casted her untimely figs when she is shaking of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the, the face of him that seated in the, on the throne, and from the rod of the Lamb. For the great day of his rod is come, and who shall be able to stand? That's um, very, very devastating, and it's going to be great. But for you, Bible tells us here what you should do, that you should, in verse 14 of um, Second Peter, Wherefore, beloved, let me read first of all in verse 12, uh, verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? And now verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace and without spot and blameless. So that's what we should occupy ourselves today. We should be concerned about purity. He that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. You make sure that you yourself, you are not just looking at, at other people and looking at other churches and looking at other believers. Look at yourself. Be sure that you are pure. If you have this great expectation that when Christ comes, he will take away his own. For in the twinkling of an eye, we are gone. A rapture. Are you ready for that day to come? That's what you should be asking. You should be pure. We should, be, we should equip ourselves also for evangelism. Because in this place, the Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We should make, give vent to that quest by going out and preaching the gospel, using every opportunity we have to warn sinners of their sure faith and bring them to the kingdom before the curtain is drawn. We should be diligent. We should be careful so that nobody overthrows our faith, as the Bible tells us in verse um, 17. And verse 18 tells us that we should be growing in grace. Ensure that you are not stagnant. And I believe that as you do all that, when the trumpet sounds, you will be gone. And when you are gone, all the things that will be happening on the day of the Lord, when God will visit his judgment upon this earth, you are not going to be a partaker thereof. Let's rise up to pray.
Everlasting Father, we thank you because of your word. We're praying and asking, Lord, that you will help us, spare us, and help us, Lord, so that none of us who have had their word today, Lord, will be destroyed in the conflagration that is coming. None of us, Lord, will be overthrown in, from our faith. Lord, as we await the coming of the Lord, as we wait for a new kingdom, a new earth, and a new heaven, we are praying and asking, Lord, that our lifestyle, our conduct and comportment and our aspirations and ambitions, Lord, will reflect